Welcome to Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Pollock bringing you the latest news going down in mixed martial arts and then we'll chat with our Fight Network analyst Robin Black. Today it's all about returns to the UFC for three different fighters and we start off with the most noteworthy of the three. The UFC announced on Thursday that Dana White and Lorenzo Fertitta met with welterweight Nick Diaz and he has signed a three-fight extension on his current contract with the organization and he is ready to fight. Diaz told UFC.com he's been staying busy and has enjoyed the time off but is ready to fight as soon as possible. The big fight being targeted is a bout between Diaz and Anderson Silva who won't be able to fight until February following his leg injury at UFC 168 last December. Tough Season 7 winner Amir Sadala will finally return to the Octagon on October the 5th in Stockholm, Sweden, where he is scheduled to fight Nico Masoke. Sadala has not fought since September of 2012 when he dropped a unanimous decision to Dan Hardy and has been sidelined with a variety of injuries since that time. Sadala defeated CB Dalloway for the tough contract in 2008, and all of his professional fights have taken place inside of the UFC. Combat out of Brazil has reported that with Mike Rhodes injured and off of the UFC Fight Night 51 card on September the 13th in Brazil, the former UFC Strikeforce and Bellator fighter Joe Diesel Riggs will be taking that spot on the card to fight Paulo Thiago. Riggs fought for the UFC from 2004 through 2006 and after dropping three straight in 2011 has since won his last six fights, including winning the first and only season of Bellator's Fight Master reality show. Riggs is returning to the UFC at the age of 31 with a record of 40 and 14 with a no contest as well. And I'm here with Robin Black and we have a lot of returns to discuss and let's start at the top of the list, Amir Sadala. No, we'll talk about Nick Diaz first. Uh, now we have a reason to talk about Nick Diaz. The, the eluding question of what's up with the Diaz brothers, well half that equation has been figured out right now. Gets a contract extension. I'm curious what these fights are going to be worth to Nick Diaz's bank account. He was very adamant. I'm either getting a title fight or I want half a million per fight. Hopefully, uh, somewhere in the middle there, because I would imagine UFC, if they were giving him a big raise, uh, they wouldn't want that figure to get out. Yeah, publicly. it won't be getting out. That'll be part of the deal. But I'm just excited Nick Diaz to come back. It's like Christmas. It's like a green Christmas. It's you like know? Christmas in Stockton, California <laughs> yeah. in the middle of July. Yeah, exactly. And it's just a green kind of Christmas. It's exciting. Nick Diaz is, you know, one of the most exciting fighters. He's one of the most exciting characters. He has no filter whatsoever in a world where every athlete says all the same stuff. You know, everybody on American Idol thanks the judges. Why doesn't anyone ever tell off those judges? Nick Diaz would tell them off. You know what I mean? It's like he's a real guy and it's incredibly refreshing in a world where everyone's the same to have a Nick Diaz or two. And as we've talked about, I mean, look at the UFC 178 card in September. There is a concerted effort to make these pay-per-views, let's load them up as much as possible. And their idea is, you know, title fights, but you're, you have more pay-per-views than you do have champions. And you need to find people like a Nick Diaz that could carry a pay-per-view. Sure. Him and Anderson Silva, that could headline yeah. a pay-per-view. And if they came to Nick saying, hey, you're not going to get a guaranteed half a million dollars, but you're going to get a back end of that pay-per-view, I'm sorry signing that qu pretty quickly if I'm Nick Diaz. For sure. I, I think they've done sort of a very good job in doing sort of a very, you know, aggressively tough job of underpaying fighters. That's that's not, you know, fans, you're playing around with, with fire as far as fans start hearing. You're paying guys $8,000 to come and fight in front of, you know, half a million people on television and on pay-per-view. That is very difficult for people to deal with. But because they've kept it so low while they've grown to this giant global organization, Half a million dollars is nothing. They probably should have already been paying these guys half a million dollars. So to be that stingy for that long, and then when you're kind of bent over a little bit by a Nick Diaz, go, okay, fine, fine, we'll give you half a million dollars, that's a good deal. Now, Nick Diaz says he is ready to fight right now. Are you holding off until Anderson Silva's ready? Because that's a bit of a wait till February is the idea, hey, we, we do have a bunch of shows from now until the end of the year, plenty that we could put him on at this point. Well, what do you do with Nick Diaz right now? Uh, man, that's a tough one because on one hand, you're like, oh, let's get him in there. Let's just get him fighting, you know, an Amir Sadala. But every fight's a tough fight. And what if Nick Diaz just has an off night? He never really seems to, but these are, this is the reality of fighting. So you could have, you know, a, a pretty good Nick Diaz 
event, or you could say, Nick, let's just talk some crap and say some stuff and you know, get caught smoking weed and date a supermodel, whatever you gotta do, just stay semi-relevant, which is not hard for him to do, till February, and then let's like hit a home run and do a huge pay-per-view. I think that's the way they'll lean. Another interesting name that is uh, returning, very much linked to Nick Diaz, the infamous <laughs> yeah. hospital brawl of 2006, is Joe Diesel Riggs. At 31 years of age, he has won his last six, of course, was featured on Fight Master, uh, taking the slot that was uh, vacated by Mike Rhodes. Uh, an interesting return here for somebody that, you know, is almost a decade removed from his UFC run. Yeah, this is cool. I think this is another much smaller uh, a deal, but people like Joe Riggs. The hardcore fans appreciate Joe Riggs. Joe Silva's got a soft spot for Joe Riggs. The eight people who watch Fight Master like Joe Riggs. So I think he's a relevant guy and he's a really good dude. To be 31 years old and have gone through the things he's gone through in life, that make, you know, life experience makes you who you are. He's got lots of it. He's got, what, 40, 50 odd, 50 odd fights going on 60 at 31 years old. And I spent two hours in a sauna with him once we both fought on the same card for the score fighting series. We both lost that night. He got his jaw broken. He was just one of the coolest guys that I've ever spent any time half naked in a sauna with. A good dude. Uh, the other one, of course, is Amir Sadali, we mentioned off the top. Uh, an interesting career when you look at it on paper here. I mean, his entire career has been inside of the UFC which I just think is, even going back to 2008, I think it's such a handicap for yourself yeah. to be starting. This guy was fighting Johnny Hendricks in his second yeah. pro fight. You just can't expect to have that kind of growth when you're in the shark tank right from the get-go. And that's why the regional shows, they are so valuable yeah. so that by the time you get to the UFC, you have that preparation. You know what it's like to weight cut and be at a certain yeah. weight on the right date and fight in front of an audience that's not on pay-per-view or national television. There's been a lot on this guy's shoulders since 2008. For sure. You see the pressure that guys have with Octagon Shock. And those are guys who have taken the walk before, stood in the cage, heard an audience, heard the screaming, faced another man standing there doing this thing, looking like he's going to... You've done all that. It's just the UFC now. Imagine you haven't even done any of that. It's crazy. In his last few fights, Amir Sadala makes very good decisions. He's a complete mixed martial artist that developed in the modern era. He's solid. He's very solid. So it'll be nice to... And he seems like a, a guy with an interesting personality who's had some heat in the UFC have helped. So it'll be another good addition, I think. Uh, Saturday night, of course, the UFC returns to Fox in San Jose. Uh, of course, there's going to be eight fights on Fox from starting off at 6 p.m. Eastern. It all leads up Matt Brown, Robbie Lawler, which many people pegging could be fight of the year. I don't think it's possible that this could disappoint. Uh, but I just look at Robbie Lawler and it, just his technical striking. Is that going to be too much here for Matt Brown over the course of a five-round fight? Yeah, the modern Lawler moves forward. We imagine him moving forward aggressively, but he actually moves forward parrying and countering. That may be the ticket to uh, facing Matt Brown. There's also the element of, of wrestling, which Robbie Lawler's an excellent wrestler, and he hasn't been using a lot, so he surprises him with a takedown or two coming forward. Lawler's in a good space here, but I mean, how do you underestimate Matt Brown? How? No, not possible. You know? Very much looking forward to that fight happening Saturday night, and right now we've got more Fight News Now Extra coming your way.